Good morning, I'm Brad Perry, host of the Arizona Daily Mix here on the CW7 Arizona. All of us here hope you are having a safe and wonderful holiday weekend. This morning, we are proud to bring you the Memorial Day ceremony live from the National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona in Phoenix. This is a day we honor and remember those in our military that gave their lives in defense of our freedom and our great nation. Thanks for sharing this day with us and God bless America. Today's special Memorial Day broadcast, live from the National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona in Phoenix, is proudly brought to you by Sanderson Ford and Ace Home Services. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Rick Bromley. And as a member of the VA Cemetery and Honoring America's Veterans Memorial Day Planning Committee, I'm privileged to be able to welcome you to this year's Home of the Brave service at the VA's National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona. You know, as, as the Stearman's uh, planes flew over, uh, I'd like to, uh, as we're waiting for them to come back around, heading back south, I'd like to give you a little bit of the history of the Stearman biplanes. In the 1920s, which were the early days of aviation, the Stearman Aircraft Company fabricated the first Stearman biplanes. Initially, these biplanes were utilized as mail service carriers and were known for their speed, maneuverability, and strength of design. From 1934 until 19, February of 1945, the Stearman Aircraft Company, which is now a division of Boeing Aircraft Company, was commissioned to build a total of 8,428 of these biplanes for the United States Army and the United States Navy for use as primary trainers. Although the Stearman was challenging to fly in the hands of a student pilot with no previous experience, the Stearman allowed instructors to quickly evaluate student performance and move those who were not progressing very well into other jobs. And I hear them coming, so I'm gonna jump forward a little bit. And as they, as they circle back, I'd like to take a, a this, they will be conducting the missing man formation. So let me give you a little bit more history of the missing man formation. While we wait, uh, the exact origin, they're behind, us. they're behind us, so I can't see. <laughs> Round of applause for them. Every year they honor us with their flyovers. Uh, let me back up a little bit more and give you just the final bit of history about the Stearman plane. Um, during, um, after the war, the Stearmans continued to fly for decades as crop dusters and air show performers. Uh, the last remaining Stearmans are now sought by collectors worldwide. And although I did not see it, I assume they performed the missing man formation. And there's a little bit of a history here which I thought was interesting, so I'd like to go ahead and tell you about it. Uh, the exact origin of the missing man formation isn't really known, although it's generally said to have begun during the First World War. One account claims the first maneuver occurred at the Commonwealth funeral for Manfred von Richto Richtoven, which is better known as the Red Baron. After the German flying ace was shot down, allegedly the British fighter pilots perform this new form of fly past as a sign of respect for the fallen airmen. Whether this was truly the first instance of the missing man formation is up for debate. However, it is clear that the practice originated among the Royal Air Force during the First World War. Not long after that, the maneuver was adopted by the Americans who began performing it as a way to honor fallen airmen and other important military figures. The first instance was uh, at the, the first instance was at a memorial service for Major General Oscar M. Westover, where 50 aircraft flew overhead with one position left ending. By the time the Second World War came to an end, it had changed to a full formation in flight, with the aircraft representing the missing man pulling up and away from the rest of the group, leaving an empty spot. Today, the missing man formation is considered a great honor and is, important, is an important part of remembering those who have fallen 
in the defense of our nation. So, a personal note, if I might. You know, on this Memorial Day, we've come together to take just a moment to remember and honor America's bravest sons and daughters who answered the call to defend their nation. And in doing so, made the greatest sacrifice of all. In today's fast-paced cavalcade of world events, we sometimes become so involved in what's happening and concerned about what will happen tomorrow that we tend to forget what brought us to this point in time in our history as a nation. And even though our country is relatively young, we've been through a nation-building revolutionary war, a traumatic and de devastating civil war, two world wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so many others. We have seen throughout our history those, those of us who support democracy and freedom have faced serious challenges. But always, always, there were those who stepped up and paid the price to protect the freedoms that we enjoy today. So I would ask that you take a moment today to reflect upon the sacrifices made by those who have served our nation. Only by doing so can we stay united by love of country, belief in freedom, and faith in America's futures. So at this time, I'd like to take a moment and recognize some special guests that are joining us today. I'd ask that you please hold your applause until all officials are identified. The director of the VA National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona is Master Randy Hurd, who is our co-host for today's Memorial Day program. The governor for the state of Arizona, Katie Hobbs. Our guest speaker and Gold Star mom and U.S. Army veteran, Diana Pike. Rachel Mitchell, the Maricopa County Attorney. Brian Matthews, Director of the VA, Phoenix VA Healthcare System. Chris Norton, Director of the Phoenix VA Regional Office. Representing Chris May, our Arizona Attorney General is Dave Harvey, but I don't think he's been able to get in yet. Michael Welsh, Deputy Director of the Phoenix VA Healthcare System. Mr. Bradley Phillips and his wife, Lisa Phillips. Mr. Phillips, is the former executive director of the Pacific District for the Veterans Administration. Admiral Jim Simons, as he takes a slip. Dear friend of mine, Arizona State historian, songwriter, and Marine Corps veteran, Marshall Trimble. Daniel Butler, who is uh, the Phoenix VA Healthcare System chaplain. American Gold Star Mothers, Department of Arizona President, Tammy Pulaski. American Legion Commander, Steve Spurl. American Legion Adjutant, Angel Juarez. American Legion Auxiliary Vice President, Stacy Mayberry. Arizona Korean Veterans Association, President Sung Il Ma and Vice President, Andy Lim. Arizona Veterans Hall of Fame Society, President Pat Upa. Association of the United States Army, State and Region 7, President Lieutenant Colonel Vic Connor, Blue Star Moms of the Southwest Valley, President Teresa Coons, Daughters of the American Revolution, State Regent Sally Loborn, Disabled American Veterans Auxiliary Commander Holly Munich, Gold Star Wives National Secretary Georgia Hudak, Jewish War Veterans of the Southwest, Commander uh, Rochel Kamen. Paralyzed Veterans of America, Past President John Tozzolino. Sons of the American Legion, Commander Chris Balzi. Unified Arizona Veterans, Past President Gene Krigo. Veterans of Foreign Wars, Commander William Jumper Schaffler. Veterans of Foreign Wars, President Bambi Johnson. Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 2135, Commander Dwayne Danner. Women's Army Corps Veterans Association, Army Women United, Past President Eldora Engelstrom. Women's Army Corps Veterans Association, Army Women United, Phoenix Chapter 68, Vice President Shirley Vega. 
I would also like to take a moment to recognize that we have so many people that support the program, but I would like to recognize individuals from the Tri-West Healthcare Alliance, Elaine Libitz and Glenn Gray, and the owners of Level Up Printing, Matt Nelson and Lori. They donated the printing of your programs today. And the Arizona Elks Association, past president Al Kayal, and of course CW7 Arizona Television. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Dale Villani, who is co-hosting today's program, and he's currently the president of Honoring America's Veterans. And of course, all these beautiful wreaths, I'd like to expand a special recognition to all the organizations that have presented these wreaths today. And you can find them on pages 10 and 11 of your program. Now we can applaud. Thank you. <laughs> Program's getting bigger, the list is getting longer, everybody. <laughs> All right, now will you please stand, if you are able, for the posting of the colors by the Luke Air Force Base Honor Guard, followed by the singing of the National Anthem by Steve Brining, uh, CW3 Steve Brining, and the Pledge of Allegiance led by the American Gold Star Mothers, Department of Arizona, President Tammy Pulaski, and Blue Star Moms of the Southwest Valley, President Teresa Coons. Color Guard, present colors. Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. The invocation will now be given by retired United States Army Colonel and Chaplain Daniel Butler of the Phoenix VA Healthcare System. This is a special day, and especially hard for me, because I have conducted too many ceremonies here. We honor our veterans, and would you join me in prayer? God, our <coughs> Creator, 
Almost two and a half centuries ago, men and women established this grand nation on your great principles of life, liberty, justice, and freedom. In light of these foundational values, our nation was kept free through the sacrifice of our military women and men who volunteered to serve, to protect, to guard our rights and independence. Today, our nation pauses to remember those who over many decades served and have passed into eternity. Thousands upon thousands never came home. We honor those who lost their lives while defending this nation. We laud their bravery, who fought on land, at sea, and in the air. They were willing to risk death to protect the land we love and to secure our freedom today. We thank them for their sacrifice and pledge to carry on their legacy to ensure that they did not die in vain. Comfort all the families and friends of our heroes. Bless them today with your presence and your gentle consolation. Encourage us this day as we remember this, these heroic women and men of this great nation. Amen. You may be seated. Hostess, hosting us this morning is the director of the VA National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona, Randy Hurd. Mr. Hurd is a decorated United States Navy veteran who served in Operations Desert Storm, Iraqi Freedom, and Enduring Freedom. After his Navy retirement, he joined the VA's National Cemetery Administration in 2009 and today serves as the director of the cemetery in Phoenix and I believe in Prescott as well. Please join me in welcoming Director Randy Hurd to the podium. Thank you, Rick, for that great introduction. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Memorial Day ceremony here at the National Memorial Day Memorial Cemetery of Arizona. <clears throat> Your support for those who died in service to our country shows that you understand and appreciate why our nation sets aside this day in order to remember, honor, and salute our fallen service members. I feel fortunate to join you in honoring our brave service members and supporting our Gold Star families. The cost of war is incalculable, and we can never repay the families who lost their, lost their loved ones to the horrors of war. The least we can do is memorialize those heroes with some solemn words, laying wreaths, and pausing in silence to pray for their souls. I also want to acknowledge the unwavering dedication and devotion displayed by the staff here at the National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona. Throughout the year, regardless of weather, these great patriots come to work to make sure veterans are properly memorialized and laid to rest in the most dignified manner. In every one of our 155 NCA cemeteries, dedicated NCA team members provide memorial services and a dignified resting place for veterans. Nearly 70% of the NCA personnel are veterans. Every day of the year, we memorialize veterans in our cemeteries, but there is only one Memorial Day. <clears throat> As you go along today, I invite you to stop at a gravesite and read a veteran's name, rank, and service component. Say the name out loud. Reflect on the fact that this fellow American served and sacrificed for all of us, asking for nothing in return, except maybe to be respectfully honored the way we honor veterans in our national cemeteries, with dignity, respect, and unwavering gratitude. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting veterans and their families. And thank you for honoring those who made the ultimate sacrifice. May God bless you, our service members, our veterans, and the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hurd. I'd now like to welcome the various honor guards 
from the various organizations who are assembled today to present the Parade of Colors. Honor Guards, Parade the Colors. The American Legion Honor Guard. The Arizona Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution Honor Guard. Arizona Society of the Sons of the American Revolution Honor Guard. Disabled American Veterans Honor Guard. The Civil Air Patrol. Marine Corps League, Old Breed Detachment 767 Honor Guard. The Women's Army Corps Veterans Association, Army Women United. Vietnam Veterans and Vietnamese Community. Now my pleasure to introduce Dale Villani, who will introduce our governor, Katie Hobbs. Mr. Villani is the current board president of Honoring America's Veterans, with, which each year puts the Phoenix Veterans Day, which puts on the Phoenix Veterans Day Parade, Arizona's Pearl Harbor Ceremony, and is now partnering with the VA National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona, which put together this year's Memorial Day Ceremony. Mr. Villani has worked in leadership positions over the last 43 years in the healthcare industry, which has included Aetna Healthcare, Sun Health Corporation, Dignity Health, and Magellan Health Services. Mr. Villani is a veteran who served with the United States Air Force Medical Service Corps. Mr. Dale Villani. Thank you, Rick. It's certainly an honor and a privilege to be with you all here today. Um, Honoring America's Veterans is proud to co-sponsor this year's Memorial Day ceremony as we remember and honor our nation's fallen heroes. It's a great event, and I'm truly, truly honored to be part of it. One of the things I want to take a moment to do is to thank Rick, Rick Romley. He is the person who was able to... <clears throat> Not only is he a great veteran, but also a great MC, but he also had the vision and wisdom to help sponsor and create our nonprofit, Honoring America's Veterans, in 2011. And by doing so, what that allows us to do is to continue to thank and, and remember our veterans through the different events, such as this one, Memorial Day, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, and of course, the Phoenix Veterans Day Parade. So, it's a great opportunity, and we really do appreciate what Rick has done for us. <clears throat> the other thank you I want to certainly give is to Randy. So the co-sponsorship was with Randy and the VA and the, and the National Memorial Cemetery group, and they were great partners in terms of pulling all this together. And if you look around at the work that was done, this was a significant, a significant opportunity to create a, a memorable event such as this. So, so thank you, Randy. So now it's my honor to introduce to you our Arizona Governor, Katie Hobbs. Yay. 
Governor Hobbs was born and raised in Arizona and has spent her life exemplifying hard work and public service. She is a graduate of both NAU and ASU and has used her Masters of Social Work to help unhoused youth in Phoenix and run one of the largest domestic violence shelters in the country. With over a decade of public service, Governor Hobbs spent eight years in the Arizona legislature, including two terms as Senate Minority Leader. She later became Arizona's Secretary of State, forcefully defending every Arizona's vote, Arizonian's vote and voice. Seeing that her home state was at a critical, historical moment, she decided to run for governor and was elected the fifth woman and fifth Arizona native to lead the state in 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Arizona's 24th governor, Katie Hobbs. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor, such an honor to be here this morning with so many Arizonans who share a love for our state and understand the value of service. Thank you to Rick, Dave, Dale, Paula, and all the staff and volunteers who've been working nonstop to make this Memorial Day and this event a meaningful one. Today, we come together in solace and solidarity to pay our respects to the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice protecting our freedoms at home and abroad. Since America's inception, our armed forces have consistently shown up to defend our land, our rights, and our people. Without the United States military, the basic principles and values we all cherish would be under threat. Because of the sacrifices of the men and women we honor today, America has been strong and steadfast. Our United States military service members selflessly put their lives on the line every day, and we have a duty to honor their sacrifice. As we reflect on their selflessness, let us also extend our support to the families they leave behind. Today, we are fortunate to hear from Gold Star Mom and U.S. Army Specialist First Class Diana Pike. Diana, I want to personally thank you for your service and express my sincere condolences for your loss. In Arizona, there are tens of thousands of loved ones who, like Diana, lost someone they care about in the line of service. My heart is with each and every one of you today and every day, because I know the, the whole left behind is there every day as well. Memorial Day was first recognized in 1868 when flowers were placed on the graves of fallen soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery to commemorate those who have died in service to our country. On this Memorial Day, Arizonans across the state gather to honor the sacrifices of those who made possible the lives we enjoy today and to maintain family connections across generations of soldiers, Marines, sailors, and airmen who have served in the U.S. Armed Forces. Recognizing the significance of this day, I am proud to present this year's proclamation officially proclaiming May 27, 2024, Arizona Memorial Day. And I encourage all Arizonans to reflect on the sacrifices made by these heroic men and women, as well as the impact left on so many families across the nation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the 108th Army National Guard Band will now perform the Armed Forces Medley, which is a compilation of the service songs from each of the branches of the Armed Forces. You will find the words to each of these songs on page seven of your program. If you served in a particular branch of the military, you are invited to stand when your service song is played.
United States Coast Guard. United States Space Force. United States Air Force. United States Navy. United States Marine Corps. United States Army.
big round of applause for yourselves. And thank all of you for your service. Absolutely. Today we pause to honor those who have fallen in the defense of our nation. And on this day, I often think about the time a person came up to me and asked, why are we as a nation so willing to fight and if need be, die? I have thought long and hard about this. And the answer to that question is sometimes very difficult to answer, and yet sometimes so simple. We fight because we believe, not that war is good, but that it is sometimes necessary. Our soldiers fight for the glory, not for the glory of war, but for the prize of freedom. The words of the philosopher John Stuart Mills perhaps said it best, war is an ugly thing, but it is not the ugliest of things. The decayed state of moral thought, where one thinks nothing is worth war, worth war is much worse. You see, a man who has nothing he is willing to fight for, who has nothing he cares about more than his own safety, is a person who has no chance of being free. I truly believe the courage of America's fallen, of America's fallen ensures that the ideals of freedom lives on. Their unselfish sacrifice deserves recognition reverence and gratitude. Only then, by remembering them, will we honor their lives and begin, begin to understand the enormity of their sacrifice. And through them, the promise of freedom for future generations. This morning, I am privileged to introduce our guest speaker, Gold Star Mom and U.S. Army veteran, Diana Pike. Ms. Pike served in Army intelligence, and her dedication to service to our country inspired her son Christian to follow in her footsteps. Sadly, her son lost his life while in service to our great nation, making her a gold star mother. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Diana Pike. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make this a quick 45 minutes. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for inviting me to speak. My name is Diana Pike. Uh, I was a prior U.S. Army Sergeant First Class and a Gold Star Mother. I'm proud to be part of this Home of the Brave Day event. We have a saying posted on a refrigerator at home by Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to make it have some difference that you have lived and lived well. The theme, the home of the brave, is so applicable to this quote because our service men and women are people of action and service. They live useful lives and have served honorably and bravely. I would like to speak to you about two service people who gave their last full measure for our country. First, U.S. Navy Senior Chief Christine Martinez who served her country honorably for more than 22 years in the Navy. But her service didn't end there. She is a, she's in the Arizona Veterans Hall of Fame. She worked with returning warrior workshops to help returning veterans assimilate. She was an honorary member of the Tuskegee Airmen. She's a veterans advocate for the University of Phoenix. Her list of accomplishments for veterans and military programs is remarkable and lengthy. But I know her as a loving and compassionate friend. Christine was part of the Navy funeral detail that brought my son, Christian, 
home as part of his dignified transfer. She brought my son all the way to the funeral home. And over the years, I have come to know Christine as a deeply spiritual person who loved her husband Juan for more than 34 years and her two children. She was a dear friend to me in my grief. Christine served in Iraq during enduring freedom and Iraqi freedom, at which time she was exposed to burn pits. When Christine developed a glioblastoma, she faced multiple surgeries and grueling treatments with grace and courage. Sadly, this February, Christine went home gracefully to her God, never giving up her courage, her honor, or her grace, and I miss her very much. The next person is my son, Christian Michael Pike, who is 31. He was a Navy chief who was killed in action in September of 2013 while serving on SEAL Team 5. On March 10th, 2013, it was a dark Sunday morning when I received a call that Christian had been shot. I sat in the dark, in shock, trying to figure out what to do next. You know, what had happened? All I knew was that Christian was shot in the head and was being flown to Landstuhl, Germany. So many events conspired which resulted in Christian's death. First, he wasn't supposed to be on the mission that day. The intel chief was, the other intel chief was ill, so Christian volunteered to take his place. Secondly, there was no expected insurgent activity, so the team was only four men. Christian was listening on his radio and heard multiple incoming insurgents. He warned the team so they could take cover on separate rooftops. Christian had to continue providing intelligence to his team, but he had to stand up in order to hear the enemy's communications, so he was exposing himself to fire. Christian continued returning fire when someone yelled, Pike, Pike is down. Christian's early warning to his team prevented any other lost casualties that day. What's ironic is that in the previous November, as his birthday month, I ordered a special anti-ballistic helmet, which was supposed to be impervious to bullets. The Navy couldn't get the helmets fast enough, so I called the manufacturer directly, and, and, and they said the helmet was back-ordered, but they would send it to Christian directly in Afghanistan. He never got the helmet. If he'd had his new helmet, the, the bullet wouldn't have penetrated. Had, he had, had the other chief not been ill, or the team had received a better intelligence, Christian would still be here. So many little things conspired that day. In Germany, I learned Christian's wound was mortal. The doctor said he died instantly as soon as he was shot. When I left my home in Peoria to fly to Germany, I knew my son was shot. And all I could think of was he was lying alone on that rooftop dying with nobody with him and then he was scared and worried about me. Christian's, had, Christian's father had died 30 years ago in a car accident so it was just him and me. And I worried that he suffered alone on that rooftop. But the neurosurgeon told me no, he was, died instantly. He probably died before he even hit the rooftop. So his body continued to live, and I was able to sit with Christian for four days before his organs were transplanted, as was his final wish. I recently received a letter from the European Transplant Union. 11, after 11 years, all five of Christian's organs recipients are still alive and well as a result of his sacrifice. So perhaps all those little unplanned events that led to saving five lives was Christian's legacy. When I got Christian's belongings back from Afghanistan, there was a book that he had been reading by Dave Bruno, 
It was called the 100 Things Challenge. The author's dedication states that we may live joyful and thoughtful lives on earth, not remembered for our possessions. Instead, let us be known for the gifts that come from our hearts. That really is what my son believed. He was a loving, patriotic man of honor, courage, and service. This flag was returned to me with Christian's belongings. He carried this flag on every mission he went on, tucked up under his body armor. It still holds the soil from Afghanistan. This is our flag, all our flags, all of us patriots. I love this flag as I loved my boy, and he died holding this flag. Christine and Christian's lives were extraordinary, but every man and woman resting here in this national cemetery has a similar story. And on this Memorial Day, we remember them all at all the national cemeteries across our great country. A quote from Admiral Nimitz reads, they fought together as brothers in arms. They died together, and now they sleep side by side, and we have a solemn obligation to them. I believe our obligation to our fallen, to their sacrifice, is to live useful lives, lives of honor, courage, and service. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this beautiful and memorable day. Fair winds and following seas, my friends. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Please know that this nation honors your son, and he will always be remembered. The next part of today's program is a patriotic ceremony performed by the Luke Air Force Base Honor Guard. This ceremony helps us to understand the meaning behind the flag folding flag folding, excuse me, that occurs when a veteran is laid to rest. I would like to introduce United States Navy Admiral Jim Simons to, to cite this ceremony. Admiral Simons is retired from the United States Navy. His last command was as commander of the Navy's region Northwest. He is also the former commanding officer of the United States Naval Aircraft Carrier USS Ronald Reagan. Admiral Simons. Thank you, Rick. Good morning. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. If you've ever attended a military funeral, perhaps you've noticed that the Honor Guard pays meticulous attention to the folding of the United States flag once draped with, that once draped the casket. Guards make crisp, precise folds a total of 13 times to complete the ceremony. Each of the 13 folds holds a special significance. The flag folding ceremony represents the religious principles upon which our great country was originally founded. Luke Air Force Base Honor Guard, front and center.
first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold symbolizes our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks and who gave a portion of their life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. As American citizens trusting in God, it is him we turn to in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. In the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be found within or beyond the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered the valley of the shadow of death, that we, may, that we might see the light of day and to honor our mother, for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood. Faith, love, loyalty, and devotion have molded the character of the men and women who have made this country great. The tenth fold is a tribute to fathers who have also given their sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of them of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The thirteenth and last fold, when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, In God We Trust. After the, fold is completely, after the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it has the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones and were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the U.S. Armed Forces, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. Luke Air Force Base, Honor Guard, retire the colors. To further reflect on the importance of our flag, I'd like to invite my friend, and fellow Marine to come forward to perform this raggedy old flag. Marshall Trimble served in the United States Marine Corps and is Arizona's official state historian. He is an American author, singer, and former community college professor. Please join me in welcoming my dear friend, Marshall Trimble. Thank you, Rick. 
and I'm honored to be here today. Each Memorial Day, we give credence to the Greek philosopher Pluto, Plato, Plato, who wrote these prophetic words more than 2,000 years ago. Only the dead have seen the end of war. I was walking through a courtyard in a village town and I saw an old man sitting there and I said, say, your old courthouse, she's getting kind of run down. He said, oh, I guess it'll do all right for our little town. I said, well, that's a skinny old flagpole you've got there. And she's a leaning just a bit. And that's a ragged old flag that you got standing from it. He said, have a seat, son. So I sat down. He said, is this the first time that you've come to visit our little town? I said it was. And he says, well, now, I don't like to brag. But you see... I'm kind of proud of that ragged old flag. Because you see, the hole in that flag there, that came from General Washington, was carrying her across the Delaware. She got those powder burns on the night that Francis caught key, sat down and wrote the words, Oh, say, can you see? She got that tear down in New Orleans, what with Andy Jackson and those red coats a pulling at her seams. And she was there in spirit with those brave defenders at the Alamo. And she was there again a few weeks later with Sam Houston's ragtag army at San Jacinto. She got cut by a sword at Shiloh Hill, and she got cut by another one at Chancellorsville. What with Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson and Beauregard and Bragg, why that old south wind blew mighty hard on that ragged old flag. But she reunited the nation, and she gave it a thrill when she rode with Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders up San Juan Hill. Oh, but then on Flanders Field in World War I, she took a direct hit from a big Bertha gun. She turned bright red in World War II. Oh, she hung limp and weary by the time that one was through. But she went off again to Korea and Vietnam, Grenada, Somalia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Serbia, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. She went proudly wherever she was sent by her Uncle Sam. The blacks, the browns, the yellows, the reds, and the whites all shed blood red for those stars and stripes. But you know, sometimes even in her own great nation, She's been badly abused. She's been banned and burned and spat upon and refused. Yeah. She's getting a little threadbare. And she's getting a little thin, but she's in pretty good shape for the shape that she's in. Because she's been through that fire before. And she can take all that and a whole lot more. And that's why we raise her with honor every morning. And we lower her with dignity at night. And we treat her with respect. And we always fold her up just right. You know, on second thought, I do like to brag. Because you see... I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. 
God bless that ragged old flag. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Planning for this event takes a considerable amount of time and effort, and I'd like to thank the Cemetery Support Committee and the volunteers who took time to place flags on each of the grave sites this past Saturday. I think we're up to about 90,000 grave sites at this time. 90,000. Beautiful cemetery. Beautiful. They take such great care of it. I would also like to thank these companies and individuals who those in, companies and individuals who donated to this program. This program could not be put on without your support. One company that donated towards the program is Medtronics. They have donated 100 bouquets of flowers, and I'd like to invite those family members who have lost a loved one in the service to our country to come forward after the program so that we may give you a bouquet in memory of their service and sacrifice. We'll bring them out front when we're all done. As in past years, the United States Submariners Perch Base also invites you to join them at their memorial for the tolling of the bells ceremony, which remembers all submariners who have died while in service. And also on your chairs, I'd like to bring to your attention Korean War Memorial event, which is to occur on June 15th of this year, I'd invite you to go there because it, many times people say it's a forgotten war, but not to those of us that have served. We understand the service and sacrifice of those individuals. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are able to uncover, uh, please, if you are able, please stand and uncover as VA Chaplain Daniel Butler offers the benediction. This will be followed by the Arizona Army's National Guard Honor Guard with a rifle volley, followed by tasks being performed by Specialist Alexander Strawn. Let us bow in prayer. Our God, we thank you for those that have been brought together today so that we can pay tribute to the military individuals who lost their lives in defending our nation. May their souls know your grace and may they experience the full measure of your love and mercy. We also ask that you guide us and make us worthy of the sacrifices from which, they, from which we benefit. We pray never to forget how blessed we are truly as a nation, as a people, as your beloved children. Keep us safe through this day. Let us depart with peace. Let us always remember. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. In closing, the 108th Army National Guard Band will be playing God Bless the USA. But before then, Oh, we have rifle volley. I apologize. The rifle volley by the Luke Air Force Base Honor Guard.
In closing, the 108th Army National Guard Band will play God Bless the USA. But before then, I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege, and I'd like to introduce an individual. His name is Joseph Abraham. Mr. Abraham is joining us today, who is 98 years old. And he enlisted in the United States Navy when he was 17 years old and served during World War II in the Pacific Theater as a seaman second class. Accompanying him is his granddaughter and two close friends. Again, join me in thanking Mr. Abraham for his service. And as we sing in our closing, I want to thank you for coming. And again, take a moment to remember and honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country. We honor them today with our Home of the Brave ceremony. Know that I love you all. Thank you. I think I should give him the mic and just let him sing it, the whole thing. If tomorrow all the things are gone I worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the ones that died and gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend us still today. Well, there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. All right, that was the warm up. Y'all know the words. Last chance. <laughs> From the lakes to Minnesota, to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, a Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA. Well, there's pride in every American's heart. It's time we stand and say And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the ones that died And gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you And defend us still today Well, there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA! Today's special Memorial Day broadcast has been proudly brought to you by Sanderson Ford and Ace Home Services.